Hello, and welcome to a special report on the re-entry of the Hyperion shuttle, the second re-entry test for the shuttle. Up to this point, the shuttle's mission had been a success. It managed to fly by the moon and then return to Earth orbit uh, using multiple aero brakes in order to rendezvous with Titan Station. Here you see the shuttle departing Titan Station. And of course, it wouldn't have had to do those multiple aero brakes if it had managed to keep its booster pack which it accidentally lost in, in its uh, time in the lunar vicinity. But uh, it nevertheless managed to rendezvous with the station. It refueled completely, so it had a full tank of MMH and N204 to fuel its RCS system, which is necessary for the return, by the way. It does require a full tank in the back in order to maintain its attitude. So uh, here you see uh, it departed Titan Station over the Atlantic Ocean, just east of Cape Canaveral. Having the Hyperion shuttle do those multiple error breaking passes ended up being beneficial because it brought back a lot of data on the shuttle's heat tolerances and allowed mission planners to reduce the target periapsis for the re-entry. The target periapsis would be 60 kilometers rather than uh, higher periapses that uh, would be used even on a lunar re-entry perhaps uh, 62 to 65 kilometers would be sufficient to slow the craft down but because of the Hyperion shuttle's high lift on re-entry a lower periapsis is necessary. Attempting to plan a ideal trajectory for the craft to return to Cape Canaveral has proved tricky of course. If we recall the first uh, test, first re-entry test for the Hyperion shuttle it ended up uh, halfway around the world from uh, Cape Canaveral, uh, close to Australia in fact. Kerbal scientists have been hard at work trying to find the optimal trajectory and they think they've found one that would at least uh, give it a chance to return to Cape Canaveral, though there's no current expectation that this uh, shuttle will hit Cape Canaveral and be able to land on the runway on this attempt. That is still a few tests away at this point. Of course, if it manages to stay in the same hemisphere as Cape Canaveral, that will be a huge improvement on the first test flight. The shuttle did its re-entry burn at 80 degrees east, which was on the dark side of the planet, then proceeded across the Pacific Ocean. You will notice in the simulated view that the shuttle, as it uh, descended through 115 kilometers, had a roll of uh, 15 degrees to the left, spoilers out, and also had a heading deflection. This was designed to help it turn its trajectory north as Cape Canaveral was further north than its uh, projected path was. It was uh, projected to hit southern Florida rather than the location of Cape Canaveral and so it was taking advantage of its uh, huge lift uh, in order to uh, gain, some, gain some more inclination to hit Cape Canaveral. That lift, however, uh, quickly became an issue as it was soon clear that it was going to overshoot Cape Canaveral and so it was decided to have the craft uh, tilt up to a 60 degree angle which would increase the drag and decrease the lift, essentially uh, creating a blunt object in the face of the atmosphere. Still tilted somewhat as it passed by the big island of Hawaii, you can see there. There was no clear information about how long the Hyperion shuttle could maintain the roll to the left in order to turn towards Cape Canaveral, but the mission planners decided to be as cautious about that as, that as possible in case uh, some heating might uh, damage some equipment, for instance the parachutes that would be necessary to retrieve the vehicle if it was not able to make a runway landing. At 166 degrees west, the craft was at 108 kilometers, going 7,533 meters per second. At 165 degrees west, it was at 100 kilometers, going only a little bit faster than that. Then at 159 degrees west, it was going at 90 kilometers altitude, 7,524 meters per second. At around 126 degrees west, it was at 75 kilometers altitude, 6,628 meters per second. As it started to get close to the west coast of North America, 
It was at 122 degrees west, 70 kilometers altitude, 6,225 meters per second. Uh, here we see it going over Baja, California and Mexico, the Gulf of California there. Uh, we start to see uh, serious heating effects at this point. Also, the craft required its RCS in order to maintain its 40 degree up pitch. At 104.5 degrees west, it was at 65 kilometers altitude, 5,300 meters per second, so slowing down substantially. Occasionally, throughout all of this, it uh, gained a certain amount of lift and started going up at certain points. That was as planned because, of course, the desired effect of the wings is to provide that lift, reducing the g-forces on re-entry and uh, also reducing heating. Uh, it actually stayed uh, between uh, 60 and 80 kilometers for quite a while. But as it uh, got to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, here uh, going over southern Texas, uh, we saw it at uh, 92.5 degrees west. It was going 60 kilometers in uh, altitude, 4,162 meters per second. It was pretty clear as it was over the Gulf of Mexico that it was going to overshoot to the east by about 5 degrees longitude. Otherwise, it was fairly close in latitude, though not exact, uh, still a little bit south as the mission planners decided not to attempt to continue the roll to the north as it was uh, experiencing the heavier parts of the atmosphere. Though at this point, uh, heating was still moderate. The atmospheric effects made it hard to maintain the pitch, and you can see the RCS system working over time as the craft passed New Orleans and the Mississippi Delta. South of uh, Mississippi and Alabama, the craft was at uh, 89.6 degrees west, 55 kilometers altitude, 3,000 812 meters per second, still going a uh, half orbital velocity here. And at some point during this, it uh, lost an antenna. We're not too sure how. However, however, there are backup antennas, and it was close enough to mission control for, for communication to be maintained. Here we see it uh, going over Tampa Bay, crossing Florida. It caught some late lift and managed to maintain 55 kilometers for quite a while up to 85.7 degrees west at 3,265 meters per second. You can see in the simulated view it is passing just south of uh, Cape Canaveral with the Cape in sight. Uh, at 82.9 degrees west over Florida it was at 50 kilometers in altitude 2,822 meters per second and as it was just hitting the Atlantic Ocean at 8.22 degrees west. It was at 45 degrees, uh, 45 kilometers now to 2,275 meters per second. About uh, 2.5 degrees west of, of Cape Canaveral, about uh, 250 kilometers uh, east, excuse me. Um, it was at 40 kilometers in altitude, 1,550 meters per second in speed. Projected splashdown at this point was somewhere around 75 degrees west, uh, 27 degrees north. Mission controllers decided to have the craft uh, turn around towards the Cape as soon as it brought itself below its maximum maneuvering velocity of about 800 meters per second. And that maneuver would start to occur right as the RCS was no longer necessary to maintain attitude control. So you can see here the RCS being disengaged and once uh, pitch control was confirmed it would start making its turn towards the Cape. Uh, a very slow turn of course, very cautious. Uh, at no point did the G-forces on the Hyperion shuttle exceed 2.5 G's. And that was consistent with the space shuttle, NASA space shuttle, which also had a very low G re-entry. At this point, everything was looking good. Uh, the Hyperion shell had retained all of its parachutes through the re-entry heating, 
and therefore could expect to uh, splash down with a velocity of 3.4 meters per second was the tested splashdown velocity with these parachutes. So uh, no problem there. The, the remaining fuel was uh, minor though just enough to uh, keep the center of mass manageable. So um, there was still some fuel in the tank just in case it would need some more pitch control or even some more forward velocity for some reason though that would only be necessary if it was trying to make a runway touchdown which it was not. It was certainly very slow uh, here descending below uh, 15 kilometers in altitude 500 meters per second and then contact was lost. Contact was lost at 75 degrees 42 minutes west, 27 degrees 15 minutes north. The craft was going less than 500 meters per second below its uh, maximum maneuvering velocity. G-forces never read more than 2.4 G's and uh, investigations are ongoing. We do not know what this means for the future of the Hyperion shuttle as a crew transport system and that will depend on whether the fault was in something environmental, something malicious, or otherwise was a fault in the craft in which case uh, some reevaluation would have to be made.